are here today with Grammy Award winning drummer Dylan Wissing at his Triple Colossal Studios in Hoboken, New Jersey. Today we're here to talk to Dylan about GMS drums. GMS drums, yeah. Dylan, how did you first hear about GMS drums? I actually heard about you guys from your, uh, there was a listing in Modern Drummer in the late 80s when announcing this new custom drum company coming in, uh, in Long Island. I go, oh, that's kind of cool. I, you know, didn't know you could do that at that point. Yeah, then I, went, I started playing in a band called Johnny Sacco that was out of the Midwest. I was teaching at a store where they had just become GMS dealers. And I'm like, hey, you should try these GMS drums. I called you, I think that was 1993. Yeah. Long time ago. Galaxy far, far away. Can you tell me some of the uh, recordings that you've played on? Drake, his, his record won a Grammy last year for Take Care. I'm on the song Lord Knows. Uh, the Kanye West and Jay-Z record, um, Watch the Throne, on that. The latest Kanye West record, Yeezus. Matt, who's operating the cameras, is on that record as well on percussion. And some stuff with Rick Ross. Oh, uh, Alicia Keys songs did you play on? Uh, Girl on Fire. Okay. The, the single. Oh, you, do, you won a Grammy for that, right? Yeah. Commercials, Valvoline commercial, uh, Banana Republic, some other stuff. AT&T. AT&T. Then a, a lot of indie clients too. Mm -hmm. You know, I do stuff for everybody and you know, I have clients on other continents I've never even spoken to on the phone. So, right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting, this modern world, it's cool. I had a few big sets of, uh, of Blue Sparkle GMS CL series, uh, the uh, lacquer. They were great. I toured with them forever with, with Johnny Sacco. We went all around the country endlessly for a, a couple thousand shows. And I mean, those things were bulletproof. They sounded great. They looked great. I mean, the day, the day we got off the road, they were like, you know, a couple little nicks and that was it. Uh, I had to sell them when I moved to, uh, to New York and was trying to haul a, uh, it was, I think, an 18 by 24 kick. And it was one thing on tour with the trailer, and it's quite another when you have to fit it in the back of a Jetta and haul it up to your third floor walk up in, in Hoboken. So I, I ended up with smaller drums at that point. So I'm looking around your studio here today and I see a lot of different um, styles of GMS drums that you have. Um, a couple of different series that we make. Could you explain some of it to us? I shifted over to the SC series, you know, the just standard 8-ply maple drums. My main touring set is a set of, uh, of the SC series. And then my, kind of my main studio set are the SC series. And, and for me, they're just my main workhorse. They're kind of like the Swiss Army Knives. You can change them to do whatever you need to do, you know. Loud, soft, quiet, high, low, with change the heads, change the muffling, change the tuning. They're great. Um, so I, I use them just kind of, like someone says, I need a drum set. Great, here's a drum set. I used to, I used to mess around with, with vintage drums a lot, but the hardware was so unpredictable. Trying to find parts was a disaster. You know, they'd be out of round or whatever. So when you guys came out with the super vintage, like, oh, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done with vintage stuff. Here it is. What is it about the super vintage drums that, that appeal to you? I mean, they're just, they're crazy warm. I do a lot of recording that references old music. Right. So uh, those are perfect. Well, what would be some of your favorite snare drums? It totally depends on the day. Okay. It depends on the day and the session. And it, uh, I never know what's gonna walk in the door. Uh, it starts with the, the super vintage. I use the uh, the five and a half by fourteen a lot. I have uh, the six and a half by fourteen brass drum that uh, I use a lot as well. I use that on uh, Alicia Keys' "Girl on Fire" record. Uh, the new Revolution brass, that's cool. The, uh, the you know maple with with brass bit on the inside. I have a six and a half by thirteen that I use a lot. And that's a great sounding drum. The more I use that one, the more. I, I'm, it's replacing a lot of, a lot of other stuff because it's really versatile, high and low, and, right. and medium, of course. And then finally, my, my other workhorse is a uh, 5 and a half by 13 aluminum shell, mm -hmm. which is a really cool drum. I use that when I'm looking for like a, 
quad stubble field kind of sound. I see you have some um, unique drums here, some maybe some one-offs or some uh, specialty drums. I, I like I like oddball stuff. I can't help it. It's um, you know I'm an oddball myself. The uh, last time I, I saw your place, the um, Tony had the very first GMS drum ever made, which I was trying to get him to sell me, but he wouldn't. Right? But I felt like Indiana Jones saying that belongs in a museum. It's cool, 12-inch <laughs> five lug. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So um, I have the world's most expensive kids drum, this <laughs> fancy GMS. Uh, I was gonna decorate my son's room with it, but I thought he would trash it, so <laughs> I kept it for me. Could you explain uh, maybe this bass drum we have behind? Ah, this bass drum. You guys called me and said, hey, we have this really weird shell. It's a 28 inch, <laughs> 28 inch six ply. We're thinking of making a, a, a Super Vengeance. I give me that drum. This thing is great. I'm I'm obs currently obsessed with it. I go in phases where I get obsessed with the drum and use it a lot. I'm completely obsessed with this thing. It's a 10 by 28, and it actually replaced. I had a an old old drum that I, I did Alicia her record with as well, and it was a cool drum and it sounded really good on that record. But again, it was old, out of round. It had been in a flood. It was an issue. So. Um, like this is totally the replacement for that, and it sounds better. It's great. Um, it's actually it just showed up on a um, on an AT and T commercial where where we did um, uh, "Wouldn't It Be Nice" by the Beach Boys. So if you see that on TV, that's this drum. Every time it's, I think, okay, great. You know, I have the set, everything's tuned and, and sounding really good. Um, the very next thing that walks in is is on the absolute opposite end of the spectrum. So right. that's why I that's why I have a lot of these drums. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I um, the work I do with these this ad agency, for example. I mean, the first thing I did was they wanted um, a movie from a big Crosby movie from the '30s, and then the next thing was early '70s Ted Nugent, and then it was be Questlove, and then it was um, be uh, you know the Beach Boys, and the turnaround is like that. They call it ten and say, okay, yeah, you know, the final track is due t this afternoon by five. So if you know, you know, get get a sound be be nineteen thirties Bing Crosby or be Questlove, and you have one hour to do it and pull it off and play it and record it and send it. I was thinking about that one day, where it's basically with the SE kit, I could do everything if I had enough time to swap out all the heads, you know, tune, tune muffle, whatever. I could absolutely do it with one kit, but not like that. So moving forward, now that you've accomplished all these things in your studio, what are, you, what are your plans coming up? We've started a, a, a big video component here. Mm. Um, and um, coming out later this fall, we'll, we'll be announcing some, some bigger things, um, which actually Tony is making some kits that fit that very nicely. Uh, Anything you could tell us about? A very rare um, uh, GMS concert town set, which I love concert towns. I, I'm a child of the you 70s. You know what, that's gonna be another first. Really? Yeah. You guys have never made a concert Tom set? No. Awesome. Great. It's so uh, well, you know, well. We'll send you pictures. It's uh, <laughs> it's gonna be badass. Very, you know, very seventies. Right. I just wanted to thank you for your time today, and uh, I think you've uh, enlightened me and hopefully everybody on what's going on at Triple Colossal Studios. And why don't you tell everybody how to get in touch with you or Triple Colossal Studios in case. Sure. The best way to get in touch with me is uh, is through my website, IndieStudioDrummer.com. That's where all my drum tracking and, and teaching and um, uh, a lot of bio and bio and track information is listed. So email there, there or you can call me on my phone. <laughs> all right, well, thank you, right. Dylan. Thanks, Rob. It was great. Thanks for coming to Hoboken. Mm -hmm.